G'day fellow riders, buckle up as we delve into the five things I hate about my Husqvarna Husqvarna 701 Supermoto. While this beast has its moments of glory, today we're going to shed some light on its quirks. Let's roll. Afrobiker. Numero uno, let's address the elephant in the room, or should I say the elephant on two wheels. The Husqvarna 701 Supermoto is definitely not a lightweight champion, but compared to other road bikes, compared to other road bikes, it wouldn't necessarily be categorized as a hefty bike. However, in the class of supermotos, it does lean on the heavier side of life, which in turn makes it a bit less agile and nimble for cornering and doing things like jumps and going upstairs. Some of these gripes I'm going to share are probably applicable for the KTM 690 and the Gas Gas 700 as well, because they're essentially the same bike as the Husqvarna or Husqvarna 701 Supermoto. Now let's talk about ABS and traction control, the dynamic duo that are not exactly on my Supermoto's good side. TC and ABS on this bike are a bit like a naughty toddler that doesn't want to do what you ask it to. 98.7% of the time I ride my bike, I turn my traction control and my ABS off. Unfortunately, with this bike, once you turn it off and you turn it on, it doesn't recall the ABS and traction control settings that you left it on. I'm sure that's the case with many other bikes, but I just wish it would remember the settings that you left it in before turning off the engine. And being a supermoto, most people would buy a bike like this for its rowdy, untamed aggression and be happy to suffer the consequences themselves. Now I know Husqvarna or KTM, whichever color you prefer, add all these rider aids to these bikes so they can appeal to a wider market and also to adhere to regulations across the board in various countries. Whoa. Okay, we're on the bike now. It's drizzling a little bit, so I hope you, you still can see. Check this place out. Anyway, the third thing I wanted to share about my Husqvarna 701 Supermoto is the security or the lack thereof. I don't know about where you live, but here in Perth, dirt bikes and supermotos are highly sought after by thieves. And that's because of how easy it is to hack the ignition and uh, just chuck them in. Oh, look at that. I hope that's your house, brother. Yeah, how easy it is to hack the ignition and um, just chuck it on a trailer or in a ute or a truck. So I'll show you something. Oh. Filming? Sorry, I'll, I'll piss off. Let you do a thing. All right, let's try again. Yeah, so I'll show you something. Like with most bikes, you have a steering lock. When you go all the way there, you push your key in and you get it to the lock position. It stays locked, right? So with this bike, it's currently in its lock position, but look at this. Look at how much play there is before it stops or before it hits the locking point. And at least for me, I think that gives a thief enough leverage to you know, be able to swing it with enough momentum to break the, break the steering. Anyway, I'm just speculating, but it's just one of those things that has me thinking every time I leave the bike by itself. Yeah, so that's my number three. I'm just constantly afraid that my bike is gonna get nicked um, of course, I've got insurance and everything, but you know, you just have an emotional attachment to your bike after putting in so many mods and having owned it for so long. And another security concern is this little cover here around the ignition. It's made of plastic and it's not even bolted in. You can just pull it out which makes the ignition barrel more accessible than it should be. So yeah, if you get this bike, 100% get comprehensive insurance. Oh, this is bothering me. 
There you go. That's better. A hundred percent get comprehensive insurance. And if you can invest in an air tag or something like that, do it. Unfortunately, it's one of those bikes that you can easily remove tags or regio registration plates and then just use it off-road where no one will be able to track that it's a stolen bike. The fourth thing that I dislike about my Husqvarna 701 is the expensive aftermarket parts. Having previously been a Japanese bikes only rider, buying parts, aftermarket parts for the Husqvarna 701 feels a bit less like a bargain hunt but more like walking into a boutique with all these salesmen that are dressed up in suits and ties. Aftermarket parts suppliers for the Husqvarna 701 ask a pretty penny for parts and I suppose the dynamics of supply and demand are at play here but it's just something worth noting if you want to get one of these bikes and due to the limited number of suppliers for parts it can take a while for you to get aftermarket parts or even replacement parts should you need repairs unlike say a Kawasaki, Honda or a Suzuki unless of course you live in Europe where these manufacturers have their home grounds because this is a supermoto you want to compare it to other supermotos I've previously owned a Yamaha WR450 which I myself converted to a supermoto and the Husqvarna 701 feels like it leans more to the road adventure side than supermoto. Motards or supermotos are known to be light and hard hitting. It's that kind of bike that will loft the front wheel in most and sometimes all gears. The Husqvarna 701 supermoto, at least this one that I have from this generation, isn't really that kind of bike and from the get-go it will demand modifications to wake it up. Is it an off-road capable bike? Most certainly it can handle light off-road duty. Even with the street tires I've brought my Husqvarna out quite a few times and it's fared pretty well but not to the level of a factory dirt bike. At least in my opinion the Husqvarna 701 Supermoto isn't the ideal candidate for 50% road and 50% dirt riding. No bike is perfect, and the 701 Supermoto is no exception to the rule. There are other things such as the hard seat, lousy quick shifter, and malnourished display that many people complain about. However, I found that the longer you own this bike, the more you get used to these imperfections. For this reason, in the long run, they're not much of an issue for me. Even after sharing all these points, this is still by far my favorite bike from all the ones that I've previously owned and here's the list. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and stay tuned for the next installment where I will talk about the things that I love about my 701 plus much more. Thanks for watching. It's your boy Afrobiker signing out. Peace.